Oh, it's got four more six blades. Long time coming, this one. Crazy work. So, this sheaf is at this stage. So, I've wet molded it with the knife cellophane, cling filmed, so the water doesn't ingress into there and make the blade rusty or make the wood swell. And then what I did was I used a big old clamp to hold my lever emblem whilst the glue set on there. So now what I've got to do is I go to my drill press, sorry true lever workers who are using all, okay, I use a, a drill I'm going to draw all my holes out there and then I'm going to score the back in order to make the, the little trenchy channel for the stitching to sit in so the blade doesn't catch it as it goes in mate. So, just drill this out a second, see in a bit. comes to gauging how much thread you're going to use stitching whatever that is either line it up down the length that you're doing or in this case it's a circle and give it six times um, whatever it is so I would do one two three open it out and then double it and then a bit because uh, the last thing you want to do is be one or two stitches before the end and then you ain't quite got enough and you're struggling trying to get the needles through and it's far better just to just to lose 50 or 60 mil too much that you've had anyway and just throw it away when it comes to trying to stitch in one neat double stitch all the way around with a lock on it it's not worth getting all the way there and then just missing out at the last minute for the cost make sure you've got enough so what I do is this Here's my sort of medallion. It's about that long. There's two. There's three. So that would put it there. I'll double it. It's a bit difficult to see, but you can see what I'm up to. It's at least that long. Oh, and then a bit. blunt knife and that's it and then you get your needle again I always leave the threads on the needles in case it hits the floor it's a bit easier seeing something that's got a big lump of thread on it rather than just a needle there's the two eight pull off the previous little bit that gets binned Because it's waxed, I pinched the end really hard, really hard, and you sort of just sort of fishtail the end up a bit to squeeze it through the, the eye to come through. Give yourself about that much out of the other end, and then open up the stitching. Might take two unwinds, get to there, pass the needle through the weave. There it is. You've now sort of locked that on there. So when you're pulling through and tugging on both sides, you don't suddenly pull a needle off the end of the, the blooming thread and then both the end up trying to get it back in again. It's sort of locked on there. So I'll do that both ends and I'll start stitching. So I'm putting in my little stitchy pony, horsey, donkey thing. I like having the inside on my right it's just I don't know it's a pattern I've got into at the moment and say if it's a clock face what I want to do is start start at one o'clock on the clock face look if you were looking at it and go backwards past one o'clock twelve o'clock eleven o'clock 
and then come back on myself and close the stitching off. So that will be the top and the center. I'd start there, so one or two stitches before the top, carry on through, up and over, around. That's double. That's now got two stitches, and then back again. That's now three stitches through those holes. That's the way I'm going to do it. So. There it is, just before, and I'm going that way. I'll see you in a bit when I'm done. So I've gone over back on myself and then I want the stitch to finish at the back. That one's so sharp, should have got the other one. That's all stitched over at the back. The stitching is under the surface of the, the lever so the knife doesn't catch it. Now, next thing is getting that in there. Now, if you've got a very sharp knife, what you can do is I call it scarf it because that's like a carpentry term for cutting off two pieces of wood to sort of taper into each other. But you can actually gently scarf the lever away to thin it down so you don't end up with quite such a a fat lump when you position your tube there. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to pressure 
and glue this together. So I'm just going to get this here and just gently remove some material. So we've actually removed about that much leather. You should be able to see an even sort of thing, and you can just see that. This is tapering. Just makes it less bulky when it goes in there. Now position wise, you could have it so you want that at the top, or it's there, so you're equidistant from there to the top of the handle as what it is from the bottom of the rod, or just whatever you want to put it really. Now because of the way that that's folded over, if I look on the back, they're not straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that absolutely straight as possible, a straight edge on the Stanley, or sharp knife, and then we'll start lining that up. So once the glue has been put in there, it's just a case of patiently putting lever protection on each little piece. Clamping it. As you can see, I've got the um, bigger, stronger one protected on the ferro rod and gripping there. And then get those two sections together there. No rush. No panic. Come back tomorrow. Do a bit more. One day. There we go. So. And then we'll leave that till tomorrow. Now that there, I might be able to sneak a little more. Just there like that. Just for a minute or two. Just put the cling film on that just to protect it a little. There we go. So it might not get a pressure mark there. Come back tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Oh yes. something.